let's get ourselves a little energized here. So this first book is called The Snowy Day. It's an Ezra Jack Keats book, right? Uh, and, uh, and, and so part of this, when it comes to using an activity, is called total physical response. Usually this is uh, used with language, language acquisition when we're thinking about vocabulary or whether sort of um, uh, terminology we want to learn. This time I'd like to use it with the book. So if you join me in this, this is a get up and, and do something activity. That means you stand up away from your computer for a while. All right. And I'm going to be sharing two lines in the story uh, of this book. All right. And so you know, the strategy is total physical response. It's doing stories in motion. All right. And so imagine uh, with this book, uh, a boy goes out into a snow into the snow in a snowy day. All right. And this is what he does. All right. And so as the actions of the words actually are read, you fulfill those actions. All right. So here's that. Here's one page from the book. He picked up a handful of snow. So everyone pick up a handful of snow. And then he picked up another handful of snow. And then still another. He packed it round and firm. You know how to make that snowball. And put the snowball in his pocket for tomorrow. Because you remember, that's what kids do. They, they get stuff and they put it in their pockets and forget about it. Then he went home to a warm house. And he told his mother about the adventure. So pretend you're talking to someone else. While she took off his wet socks. And that is one page from Ezra Jack Keats' book, The Snowy Day. Maybe that got you up and moving and, and energizes us a little bit uh, for, to get us started today. So, so that's one of the strategies. So this is a simple strategy of how we can use books to, to actually get kids up and moving as well, right? And so a, a fun one. And I'll address that one a little bit later too, right? And so earlier today, uh, you heard Will Richardson uh, ask us about capturing... Uh, one word and a feeling that you might have about uh, education in schools at this moment. And I, I'm not sure if everyone got a chance to actually see the words. And so this is what came from it. So I took a snapshot of it. You can see that mostly, you know, you know, you know how these wordle things work, right? Um, uh, they, they bold the bigger, uh, they show the, the largest word with the one that comes up the most. So you can see challenging is the word that really resonates for, for most people. So I wasn't sure uh, if everyone had a chance to actually see that. Right, so, so talking about you know, stories and strategies for any age, uh, I'm, I'm thoughtful about uh, uh, some, some things that are, that are super important. And this is where I wanna share with you, you know, what in the world does engagement actually mean, right? And so, all right, so it's complex. As you can see, it's multi-dimensional, uh, multi it's messy. It's out, of our, it's, it's out of our control sometimes, right? Uh, but a lot of it is in, in, our, is in our control though. And there are three areas I really want to just emphasize uh, with everyone today uh, around uh, what, where engagement actually comes from, right? And, and the first one is behavioral engagement. The second is uh, emotional engagement. And the third is cognitive. And that, that falls on the shoulders of the teacher, right? To, to do our best to try to uh, engage our students in understanding stories and right, helping them uh, learn new knowledge about things, whether they're fiction or information text. Right? And then obviously there is a piece that's out of our control too around the behavior. How do our students react to uh, those things? But our instructional decision-making can, can enforce uh, this love of reading and what we can, how we can use uh, books to, uh, to, to drive uh, better instruction. Right? And so ultimately uh, student engagement is that function of both the individual and the construct. And we own the construct, All right? We own that, all right, that, that piece of it. Right, it varies in our its intensity and obviously its its duration too. Some have more stamina than others. All right, I'm going to present here just for a moment. All right, so we can uh, see this a little bit bigger. And let's see if this works. You know how these things go. I just hope the dreaded fan doesn't come on with my computer. That's 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 the the the, the most important thing. All right, so here we go. All right, look at that. It's working. All right, so I'm going to move, it, move us on a little bit here about clarity with our session today. 
right? And so let me just move this out of the way. All right, clarity. All right, so point, uh, I wanna be clear about uh, today's session. I'm not gonna do Flipgrid. I'm not gonna do Nearpod. I'm not gonna do anything Jamboard, nothing with new websites. I'm not gonna do breakout rooms. I'm not gonna do anything Google except this presentation. And I'm not reading an entire book to people. I will be doing some snapshots of some books and a couple pages here and there, and maybe four or five different things. I will say yes, of course, yes to the chat box. Uh, yes to the virtual hand raise to share too, right? And so those are a few things. So if these things aren't in your wheelhouse for what you're looking for today, then feel free to exit and move on to another session, right? And so uh, I, I want to be I want to be crystal clear about that. Uh, I'm I'm really here today to to focus on the engagement of books, reading, uh, so, uh, hopefully some takeaways and prompting our thinking about our choices with instruction, right? And so the the next thing. Uh, I'm going to be really clear about a point too, is this is the first time I'm presenting this. So this could be a failure. All right. And this, and I'm going to hopefully learn from our session today as well. Right. And so you can see all the different kinds of failures that people trying things and giving it a go. Right. And so I'm hoping it isn't, but this could be right. And then point three is really talking about a love of books. I said that in the very beginning. All right. And, and you can see, take a look at this baby here. The second the book gets closed. Look at that baby's reaction. All right, one more time. Boom. Oh no. Oh no. And that's what we want our kids. That's where we want kids. Uh, we want them engaged in, in books in, in that way. All right. So those are the three points. So at this point, you have a decision. You, know, you can stay. You can ignore me. You can just hang out. I, hopefully you keep your screen on. I, I really do hope that. Right. So I want to address a clear point here about books, though, uh, and this is more so about authors, right? And so uh, my question is, why do writers write, right? And so uh, I'm going to ask you to use the chat box for a moment here, right? No, we're not going to another website. We're not going anywhere else. We're just using the chat box and Zoom, right? And so I want you to list one thing you think the re a reason why writers write. List them there, please, if you could. And I'm going to escape so I can actually see some of these things. Oops. I'm giving one away for free there just so you can see it too. Let me go to chat so I can see. Oh no, I didn't want to do that. Where is the chat? Uh, there it is. Okay. So I can see everything. All right, got new messages here. Uh, travel to new places, express themselves, to share, to show understanding, feeling inspired. All these, all these things are right. All, they're all right. Okay, so here are a few. I'm not going to read them to you. You can take a look. I hope one of them resonates with you. I'm going to end on number 15 for a very clear purpose. Right, uh, and here's here's the thing. So, as teachers, we kind of get into this world of, oh, this book is perfect for, oh, I love this book because, and we think that the author wrote that book for us to use in our classroom, right? And so let's be let's be clear about this. Uh, some people might say writers write, so teachers have the perfect book when they when they use. Uh, uh, to use when they are uh, teaching about something. Well, no, all right, that's that's not true, all right. Writers write for all of the reasons you see on the left and all the things that you wrote about as well, all right. And so let's be clear about that. I, I put a couple of links at the bottom about where this information comes from. If you want to go back and and actually look, if you're the, if you're that geeky and that kind of a keener, you can see where the re some of the research comes from. All right, so I have a picture here. This is such a great picture. Feel free to take a snapshot of it. It's, ulti it's, it's, it's got engagement written all over it, right? And so it's just, I, I hope you see those faces in your classroom I, right now, maybe on Zoom. For some of you that might be in other parts of the world, you're welcoming kids back to your school, your campuses, wherever it may be. This is a great picture of what engagement can look like. And yes, there's a, there's a person with a book there, right? So, so that, that is happening. So I want to I want to make sure that as we talk about authors and writers, um, uh, we start with the emotional connection, right? Because that's what books are about. 
Right? Books are about an emotional connection first with kids. They want to be able to connect with that story and with the reader and, and what's going on. All right, so, so I'm just going to share a couple of the books that I have an emotional connection to. And if you feel like you want to share a book where you have an emotional connection, put it in the chat box, please. Feel free to steal the ones I have as well if you know those titles. All right, let me go to the chat box. Now I'm getting the hang of this a bit more. All these things in front of me. Oh, I can see someone loved Educated. Ah, uh, Paper Bag Princess, yes, one of my favorites, Giving Tree. Ah, uh, my most magnificent thing. All right. There's a few Paper Bag Princess fans out there. All right, Educated, Giving Tree, and so on. All right. So let me, let me also be clear about another thing. You might see in the very center, it says Dick and Jane. And I'm gonna say it's not the most compelling set of series, but it had it, I have an emotional connection to it because those were the books I started reading with. That's that was my engagement, right? <laughs> that was my engagement in a year, I won't say, or or a few years, I won't say uh, what year it was. But the other ones I, I think have more compelling uh, pieces to them. Some of them information texts too, right? Because they're about hobbies I have uh, as well, right? So so I think it's important to ensure that there is an emotional connection we have with books first before we get to some of the things we want to do with kids with those books, right? And so when we think about engagement, well, in our world right now, you know, this, this, this is what we own. We own a teacher-directed learning right now. And, and let's be clear about that because it's this, it's this all right? It is, it is you on Zoom. For those of you that are continuing to be fully virtual as we are at ASFM. It's, it, we need the teacher to prompt so much of what we're doing, especially when it comes to read alouds, right? And, and so if you're in a live environment, it's gonna look and sound quite different, right? Ultimately, we want students uh, being student-directed, right? We want them uh, unpr unprompted responses. We want them writing about things and sharing about them. We want them performing and presenting. It's gonna need a little bit more uh, of a nudge uh, when it comes to that uh, in a virtual environment, right? And so I'm sharing this with the concept that this, these could be used anywhere, right? These could be used both in the virtual or in a lot in the live uh, in-person sense as well, right? And you can see down the bottom, I get a good portion of this from Ed, Ed Utopia. All right, so, so one of the things I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna throw in here, here's this great picture. Uh, I decided that uh, research was important to share, so I will today. And I decided that I like muffins and cupcakes. So I put the two together uh, and you can see, I'm gonna sprinkle in a little research here and there, all right? Just about read alouds, all right? So, so that's, that's the autonomy I get to have with this, uh, with this kind of presentation. All right, so the first thing, reading uh, aloud is the foundation of literacy development. It is the single most important activity for reading success. You know, I, I don't think, I think most of the people here that are joining uh, us today drank this Kool-Aid a long time ago because you wouldn't be here if you didn't think th these things are ready, right? And so, uh, so this is a, a piece that I think you can always have a takeaway of reminding ourselves, why do we read aloud? This is it, right? This is one of the, this is one of them. And I'll, again, I'll like, let me see, I'll sprinkle in a couple other ones that you can take with you too. All right, so I want to get us started here. All right, and so let's get rolling. Uh, here's a photograph that I think is important uh, that you can do to make read alouds interactive. These are quite simple. I think we know all of these turn and talk, act it out, hand signals, stop and jot, thinking aloud, stopping and drawing. All right, those are some of the things that I'll be doing as well today, uh, just in a bit of a different sense. All right, so, so uh, what I did with the very first one with the Ezra Jack Keats book. That was uh, with uh, Snowy Day. Uh, that's, the, that's an example of what we're gonna be doing here. All right, so let me see if I can move all this over here. Okay, so the first one I've got, oh, and a show of hands, please, who knows this book? I gotta see, I gotta see, I'm gonna see how many people I, as I can as possible. Put in the chat box if you do know this one. All right, I see some, I see some, some thumbs, all right, uh, some thumbs up and so on. Let me just get my screen sorted out here just one more time. All right, I have two screens going on, one to see everybody and 
it's, you know this world, right? Come on, I, I really don't have to say that, but um, let's see, here we go. All right, so this one, what I'm gonna do is stop sharing here for a moment. Uh, this is called Keep the Count, all right? I'm gonna switch to a document camera here for a moment. Whoops, let me go back, stop sharing. Come on, stop sharing. All right, and then I'm gonna go to, uh oh. Stop sharing. There we go. Okay, so then I'm gonna go to share screen and show you this book. All right, and no, that's not it. Cable and share. All right, can you see? Can you yes. see the book? Yes, we'll do. All right, All right. you guys are a great audience. Thank you. All right, so the concept here is keeping the count. All right, and so for the count of this one, you can do this or not do this, it's up to you. You decide. All right, and so this is called uh, the, There is a Bird in Your Head. And, and I'm sure there'll be a chuckle by somebody or at least a smile by somebody who's seen this book. Right. And the idea here for uh, using this kind of uh, story is that kids need to stay, kids need to stay uh, uh, attentive to each page. Right. And what I want to promote is you don't stop reading. You just keep reading the book because you've given them an assignment. Right. And so I'm asking if you would like, you can count how many exclamation marks, how many question marks, how many periods. You can, you can choose just one. It depends on what your outcome is for this, but this is a great book to use it for. All right, and here we go. I'm just gonna get it started. And of course, like a good reader, I'm ensuring that I'm using inflection in my voice uh, for all things reading. Here we go. There is a bird on your head. And you can see the photos that are there. And you can see the photos that are there. I think we know these characters, Piggy! Is something on my head? Question mark. Yes. There is a bird on your head. There is a bird on my head? Question mark. Ah! Is there a bird on my head now? Question mark. No, period. Now there are two birds on your head. What are two birds doing on my head? They are in love. And I'm gonna close it there. Stop sharing. All right, so you can, you can kind of see that the, an engaging piece of this uh, is, is giving the students something to do, right? And that is obviously something we want, you know, we, we'd love for, for students to be able to uh, uh, stay fully engaged when it comes to when it, when it comes to reading books aloud, but I, I also want to emphasize the fact that uh, that it won't always be the case, you know, in a virtual environment, right? And so there's one. Keep 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 the count, right? All right, and then the next one. All right, the next one's uh, called What's So Funny? All right, so let me move this book here. All right, this is Dog Breath. All right, uh, thumbs up if you know Dog Breath. <laughs> I love this part. No, all right, I'm gonna, a bunch of people don't know Dog Breath. So here is the strategy for this one. Right, and so all you need to do, wait a second, back here, oh, this is fun, share screen again. All right, all you need to do is select a humorous book, like Dog Breath, all right, and, 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 and so, and then discuss, make sure you discuss humor too with your kids, all right, and so as you read, uh, have students write in the chat box. You could possibly, a thumbs up if you know the waterfall. How many people are familiar with the waterfall? Yeah, it, it's probably old news. Okay, so the waterfall thing, just to explain it, uh, the concept of waterfall uh, is, let me just make sure I can do this, uh, chat, is you ask people to think of something they want to share, all right? And then uh, in, in the chat box, you write in, students will write in their response, but they don't hit the enter button until you tell them to do so, 
right? And so that's the concept of waterfall. So all of a sudden there's this big waterfall of responses that, that come in, right? And, and so we're, we don't need to do this now, but, but I, can, I can share with you, that's, a, that's been one that I see working a lot in some schools or in classes, I should say, right? And so the concept of this one and, and so uh, is don't stop reading. And, and the question I've asked is what is so funny? Because what is funny to one student might be different and funny to another student. All right, and so I'll stop sharing here for a moment. I will then instead share my screen for the, the book. All right, here we go. So imagine you're the students and you've, you've asked them to write down or keep a note of what's so funny. They can draw a picture of it. They can, they can do whatever they want. You, you make it clear what you, the expectation is, right? And so dog breath. And so there, <laughs> there once was a dog named Hallie who lived with the Tosis family. Hallie Tosis was a very good dog, but she had a big problem. All right, Hallie Tosis had horrible breath. Oh, let's take a look. Whenever halitosis opened her mouth, horrible things happened. Look at all the horrible things there. Uh-oh. I wonder how many. Even, excuse me, when the children took halitosis for a walk, everyone else walked. <laughs> On the other side of the street, even skunks avoided halitosis. All right. I think you're getting the, the idea of the story. All right. And so at this point, what we would do is... Uh, is uh, if you want to use a waterfall uh, type uh, event, and we can try that now, right? And let me share share screen again. All right, is you fill in the uh, in the chat, right? And then and then I say one, two, three, and then you hit enter, right? And so let's give it a try. Let me pull the chat up. Uh, where's chat? Here it is. All right, so type something in that you thought was funny. And then one, two, three, enter. Look at all those things. Horrible things, the dog's name, the dog's name, Mona Lisa's face. Yeah, yeah it is just so much you can get. The painting holding its nose. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff you can take, the leaves dropping from the tree. All right, so that's another one. I'm gonna move us on here because I'm also conscious of our time. All right, the next one. The next strategy is called, it's a wordless or near wordless books, all right? And here's the challenge, right? Uh, I, think, I think sometimes we, as teachers, you know, we, 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 we want to make sure that we're asking good questions and so on. The challenge here is to ask what questions and just stick to what questions, all right? You can see the screen, all right? And so there are two books in particular. They're brand new. Oh, I, I, these are amazing. Pick, these are fully not, these are wordless books, all right? And, uh, and uh, what I, what, what I want to do, I'll show you a couple pictures in just a second, right? Uh, is make photos of certain pages you want. So if you're doing this virtually, you can certainly do what I'm doing, which is, which is uh, you know, showing the book uh, in, in a dot cam form, or you can take photographs of them and put them in the slides. Right, and so the challenge you ask yourself though for this is how you ask questions using only the starting stem of what. So I've written three here. What did you notice? What is your evidence? What will happen next? So a prediction question, right? And so uh, quest and journey are great for these, right? And we're gonna get, do this in just a moment. Then you can turn it around and have the students ask the questions back to their class. What questions would you ask? What about this? And everything has to start with what, right? And then have students, the object of course, when it comes to wordless uh, or near wordless books is to have students tell the story and tell what's happening and share and share and share because there are no words. The pictures are the only things that are there, right? And there are some titles down below that are other ones as well, uh, including um, Tuesday by, it's about frogs or toads that, uh, uh, that are uh, flying in the air. And then wolf and snow, wolf in the snow too. So just to give you an idea of what they look like, right, I'll share that in just, in just a moment. 
But first, okay, so here, here we go. What do you notice? Put it in the chat. First picture, what do you notice? All right, if you would like to, if you would like to share yours verbally, please raise your hand virtually. And Andrea, if you could, uh, could you uh, uh, unmute or unmute and share? If anyone has want something you want to share, go ahead and do it right now. Because I can't see everyone's names for some reason. Feel free to unmute and share. Well, I can see all the family that it's busy with something. Yeah. Someone else. What do you notice? I notice everything is sepia except for the red scooter. Ah, okay. Anyone else? One more thing. A sad board girl. Mm, okay. Let's keep going with the pictures. Thank you. Take a look. This was the next page in the book. Whoops. Sorry. Here you go. This is the next page in the book. What is happening? The things that you can play with are color red. Okay. What else is happening? Everyone else. Trying to call for attention from them. Calling for attention. Aren't, yeah. Trying to get attention. All right. Let's keep going. I get the feeling, I get the feeling that each person she goes to is busy, just like someone said earlier. You know, the the it looks like there's busy here on the phone, busy here on the computer, and someone on their phone right here too. Right. And so where do kids go? Well, take a look at that picture. What's happening there? She's sad. She's in her room. What do you see so in the room? Disappointed. What do you see in the room? There is a cat, a pet. What else? There's no more red toys or scooters or anything. An open window. You get to this part of the story and you, you need to ask a question. What do you think will happen next? There's no... She will, she will go out. She will play with a cat. Or I think she's waiting for someone to come in to her room. All right. This is the next photo in the story. Take a look at it. You've identified a feature in the story. What do you see? Red crayon. Ah, something, red. something red. I can see some people adding chats. I can see pencil, red crayon. Whatever it is, it's red, and the cat is now leaving too. Okay. What, do you, what do you think? What, what do you think will happen next? She's gonna write something. Mm. She's going outside. She will follow the cat. <laughs> Here's the next page in the book. She drew a door and left. A door to ex to escape reality, maybe. What is what what's a, what is happening with this red uh, marker, pencil, crayon, whatever it is? It's, it's a magic. magic. It's magic. Yeah, I, take a look, and then the next picture. And we'll pause there. <clears throat> what do you see now? She's creating her own world. Kala. A colorful world. Using her imagination. A brilliant world. Amazing. She went to another place that she wanted to be. All right, she walks a little further, I think. What's happening here? There is a lot of light everywhere. She can see her reflection. There's Feel something alone. red in the water. Mm. Here's where the book changes a little bit. So what do you see happening in the next one? Yeah, the bridge was like destroyed, so she needed something to go to the other side of the river or... An adventure. She's creating her own She's world. creating, yes, she's creating something to a boat keep on what imagining do you know, things. What, what do you know about the red marker at this point? It helps her overcome obstacles. Yes, it it's helps. her imagination. What's 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 the evidence you have for that? Right now, she's making it herself. What other evidence have you seen? 
every time she draws something, there is coming something else like for right. her to spark. The crane is kind of a tool to transportation. Yeah, right. she's trying like to escape something. Yeah, she wants to escape. <laughs> you guys are going you... power to flourish. You all are going very deep now into the meaning of the story. <laughs> so thank you. That is, I'm going to go back up here, uh, and I'll, re I'll remind, just going to go back to the, the, the books themselves. The original one was called Quest, excuse me, Journey, and then the other, the second one that comes after it is called Quest, right? And so uh, if you're interested in those, you know, you can see the titles there uh, below as well. Right, and so, uh, so some super stories, you can see there's a lot that comes from it. And the challenge that, that uh, is just using a what, just using a what for a stem of a question. All right, so next piece of the next sprinkling of um, research, read alouds. It provides, chill, it provides children with a demonstration of phrased fluent reading. And so I wanna focus on that just for a moment here and for a book called A Little at a Time. All right, and so, so this is called, this strategy, strategy is called Say the Phrase, right? And so I'll, I'll go through it. It says select a book that has repeated words or phrases. So I might be using this one more with our younger learners. Uh, model the expectation, right? And we're gonna do that. Kids love pushing buttons. They love pushing the mute button. They love pushing the un unmute button and unmute it back and forth, back and forth. This is where you can actually have them do that all they want within the expectations, right? And so, so get your mute button ready, all right? All right, and I'd like for everyone to, uh, when, when I say go, all right, uh, I'm gonna ask you to say the title of the book and the title is called A Little at a Time. And then when you're done saying that, I'd like for you to mute yourself again. All right, so everyone go to, go to mute, stay on mute, all right? And then I'll, I'll say one, two, three, go, and then it'll be a little at a time, all right? And then you mute yourself again. Ready? One, two, three, go. A little, a little, little at a time. time. A little at a time. All right, and I can see lots of mute buttons already there too. So lots of people following, good, good teachers following, uh, following instructions. All right, so what I'm gonna do is switch here and we're gonna do the same thing. Share screen and book and, all right, here we go. All right, thumbs up if you can see the book. Okay, a little at a time. All right, so the, the nice part about this one again is there's a pattern to the stories Right, uh, and this is written by David Adler. Uh, some really good artwork, right? And this is a this is a book that has a discussion between. Basically, it's a, it's a conversation and walk between a grandfather and and his grandson, right? And it starts by saying, "How did the tree get to be so tall, Grandpa? How did it get so tall?" And I can't get all of this in, but I'll try to get as much in as I can. When it started, it was just a seed. Then it grew and grew and grew, but it only grew a little at a time. Now, that's the name of the book. So here we go. While I'm reading, I'm gonna read this page one more time. And then when I get to the part, I'm gonna have my finger on this part too. When I get to this part, I want you to unmute and say a little at a time as well. All right, here we go, ready? When it started, it was just a seed. Then it grew and grew and grew, but it only grew a little, a little at a time. And back to mute. And how come I'm so small? Of course, lots of questions from, from this youngster. When I was your age, I was smaller than you. You'll grow, not as tall as that tree, but maybe taller than me. You'll grow the way I grew, We'll do one more here. How did the hole get to be so deep? How did it go to, how did it get so deep? Watch the shovel, watch that big shovel. Each time the shovel drops down and digs up some dirt, the hole gets deeper. But grandpa, the hole doesn't look any deeper, but it is. 
it's just hard to notice when something changes a little at a time. time. At a time. All right, you get it. I won't go on, go on from there. So there's lots of books out there where you can, where we can uh, engage students in a way where they're participating and we want them to hear our voice and also we want them to uh, uh, be engaged in the story too and they can uh, repeat phrases. So that one's called uh, Say the Phrase, right? Let me go back here, share, share screen. Next one. All right. The next one comes is a book. Uh, uh, and so uh, thumbs up if you know the dot. All right. There's even a dot day. I, I just want to say this. I, we won't do this activity, but I, I want to share this one with us. This is a great example of students drawing while you're reading. Now, I, I want to be clear. Before this presentation, I did some reading on this. right? And I wanted to find out the research of, is that a good thing or is it not? And I got to tell you, it's mixed. Some people say, no, they should be paying attention to you while you're reading because you're focused on something instructionally. And others say, yes, it is perfect because it brings them, calms them down after a recess or, or something else, right? And they can draw and they can share and they can illustrate what's on their minds that's coming from the story too. The best message I read basically said this, when you are reading and you do allow students to draw or doodle or do something, the idea here is if you're asking them questions, they need to be able to read, they need to be able to answer them. So if they're not able to answer them and they're focused too much on the drawing or too much on something else, then we, we've now set the tone up for them not to be successful, right? And so we need to draw, uh, uh, to devise clear parameters about what we expect when we are reading aloud, right? And so it's, it's really about our intended outcome too, right? And so I have two books that uh, I think would be great in this. I recommend reading these without showing the pictures, all right? The first one is the dot, right? And it's all about a, a student who thinks they're, that uh, she is not very good with uh, drawing. And the story goes, it goes into uh, uh, the support of a teacher saying, well, you can, you actually are better than you think. And then there's a, now this, this new intrinsic motivation, right? The second one is called One. I wanna share that. Anyone know One? Anyone familiar with one? Any thumbs up? All right. So one, I'll share this a little bit. All right. I'm going to switch here. Uh, stop share. Share. I think Zoom needs a switch share. I don't know if they have that or not. All right. So, so this one, uh, funny, this one, um, no pun intended there. No joke intended. All right. So one uh, is is a story and it involves color. Now I'm, I'm breaking my own rule here by showing you the book, all right? But this would be one I would, this would be a story that I would read without showing the pictures the first time and then showing them, the, showing it to them the second time, right? Because it's all about color and it's, and there's a lot about meaning here too, right? And so let me zoom in just a little bit. There we go, all right. Blue was a quiet color. Let me get focused here. He enjoyed looking up at the sky, floating on the waves, and on days he felt daring splashing in rain puddles. Every once in a while, he wished he could be more sunny like yellow, or bright like green, more regal like purple or outgoing like orange, but overall, he liked being blue, except when he was with red. I'll read one more page here. Red was a hothead. He, he liked to pick on blue. Red is a great color, he'd say. Red is hot, blue is not. Then blue would feel bad about being blue. Well, I'm not going to spoil the story, all right, for everybody. So uh, that is a that is, it's a super story that you can you can kind of get into uh, a bit more uh, at the end, where you can see where it's going. Where there's a bit of a bullying theme that can come from the story too. Ultimately, it's 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 an engaging story where you can have kids doing something while you're reading. Yet, as I was mentioning earlier, make sure your intentions are clear about 
uh, about what you expect students to do or not do when it comes to using that kind of story, right? Uh, I want to emphasize uh, a point, you know, reading them once is great. Uh, reading them two, three, four, five times, we're going to find a lot more that can come from it when we revisit books, right, on a regular basis. All right, next one. Moving us on here. All right, the next one a, a, is similar to the, the, the concept of art and the concept of visuals when it comes to these kinds of books. This one's called Repeat uh, uh, I Spy, uh, and this is a repeated phrase book as well. Right. Uh, this one's a little different because it involves alphabet. And so if you're thinking about, you know, uh, uh, certain letters that you're introducing or sounds you're introducing and then still having some fun, this is a great book uh, to to include. Right. I spy. Right. And basically you select some uh, there's some repeated phrases in it. Right. Uh, and uh, and and it does a uh, excuse me. Right. Um, uh, there is, a, there is, there are some things in a picture. These, these great, these great illustrations and and, and uh, paintings uh, where students need to find things, right? So a super book. I'm conscious of our time here. I'm today we're at 15 minutes, right? All right. All right. So uh, earlier I did snowy day. I want, uh, if you can, uh, well, I'm going to share the link. I'm going to open this link. I'm going to kind of break my own rule here for a moment. I'm going to open this link. This is, uh, I was mentioning earlier about total physical response and the snowy day, and snowy day is a great book for this. There's also these other stories, if you're looking to prompt people and get people moving, right, there's a link here around these stories where you ask students to actually get up and move based on what's in the story, right, and so I have one prepared here, and it's actually called the snowy day, and this one's a little bit different. Right, uh, because this isn't a book. This is a story that's written intentionally to get kids up and moving. Right now, the 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 concept. Uh, well, that's the concept behind it. Right, and so there's a link there that you can find different stories that uh, where that are um, listed for you, and they and they're underlining certain actions that the kids can do while you're reading the story. Similar to what we did at the very beginning uh, uh, of our time today. Okay, that's snowy day. All right, next one. Oh, more, more research. Okay, here you go. Uh, a 1984 study by Thomas Stick uh, showed that children's reading level doesn't catch up to their listening level until around eighth grade, right? And so I want to be clear about this too. You know, uh, so far I've pretty much was uh, leaning on, on fiction books. So I want to show one here that's a bit different. This is an information text. Right, and the strategy uh, is called picture first. Right, and so rather than read the story, rather than show this, the pictures to the students, excuse me, rather than read first, we want to show the pictures first. Right, and so and so it's selecting non uh, nonfiction or informational text that you think is compelling in some way, something provocative. It's going to get people thinking, talking, and speaking. Right, and so questions like what stands out. What, uh, what will the book, uh, what will the book say? Uh, uh, what is missing after reading this excerpt from the book? All of these things are, are, are wonderful. And I have an example here, right? And so get your text box ready, right? Get your chat box ready for this, all right? And so here is a picture, all right? My question to everyone is what stands out in this picture? Ready, one, two, three, share it in the chat box. Snake, snake, eyes, eyes, detail, stunned expression. All right. A lot of, lot of common things. Oh, scales. Look at that, too. All right, next one. Ready? Here we go. Next one. What stands out in this one? Fill the chat box again. Horns, wow, that's that's interesting. Horns, tongue, tongue, him eating something. Green, okay. Look at all those things. All right. So, so here is where we take the book, and we and we read what after they've seen the the 
after they've seen uh, the photograph. Right, and so what I'll do here is let me switch to this just for a second here. And I'll do one example. So stop share. All right, so here's the book, uh, Talented Animals. You can really choose any kind of book as long as it has these pictures to it. But the, but the concept here or the strategy here is show the picture first, get them engaged there, and then do the reading, right? And so here's long tongues. Uh, some animals have incredibly long tongues, which they could use to catch food. A chameleon has a long sticky tongue. When a chameleon senses an, inter an, an insect nearby, its tongue shoots out and wraps around the insect, pulling it back into the chameleon's mouth. So reading information text, I gotta say, is just as important. It's a different kind of read aloud uh, intention, but it's just as important too. All right, and one way to address uh, non-information uh, text is to ensure that you know uh, we're, we're getting the we're getting pictures and, and information into kids' hands. A lot of times, it's going to mean taking pictures of things too, right, and putting them into slides. You know, if you're in a virtual form. Next one, share screen. Go and share again. All right, I have a story here called Flower Garden. This one is more for our younger, uh, younger readers, all right? And you can do this in a couple different things with this story. One is you can do a sequence and an order of events. So this story has a clear order of what happens first, what happens second, what happens third. And you can go through that with, with students uh, in that way by having them write down or sketch something while you're writing. And the clear intention here is they have a certain amount of time to do it. You can see number three, students draw for 60 seconds or less, or they label something on a little slip of paper. And so they'll end up with a number of papers in front of them, or you can have them cut them out into, into pieces. Because after this, you would reread the story and show, uh, and, and what their job would be to do is to follow along and, and look at the sequence of the story from, from beginning to end. Right, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna switch here just so you can understand the story a little bit because that's one thing you can do with this story called Flower Garden. The other you can do is stop share, share. All right. This is kind of similar to what we did earlier. Make sure this is. All right, thumbs up if you can see the story. Thank you, Maria Elena. Thank you, I can see you. Who else do I see with a thumbs up? Thank you, Rocio, as well. All right, so Flower Garden by Eve Bunting, and uh, Eve Bunting has so many great stories, right? The, I was actually, when I saw this one, I was kind of surprised because most of her stories are, are, are a bit more complex, right? And are for some, uh, some older readers, right? So Flower Garden, and, and this one's unique in that it has a rhyme to it, all right? And it goes this way, garden is, excuse me, garden in a, sharp, a shopping cart, doesn't it look great? Garden at the checkout stand, I can hardly wait. Garden in the cardboard box, walking to the bus. Garden sitting on our laps, people smile at us. And we can go back, and this is an examination piece that we can do about who do they see, who's in the pictures. I mean, the vivid illustrations are, are incredible. And so you can use the sequencing piece for this because it goes from the bus, then up the stairs in the apartment, then into the apartment, then they're doing something with, the, with all of the dirt and they're putting it all together. Purple, uh, put purple pansies in each end, daisies white as snow, daffodils, geraniums, and tulips in a row. Garden in a window box high above the street where butterflies can stop and rest and ladybugs can meet. 
And you think about this story, you're like, okay, it's all about flowers. But then something happens. Walkers walking down below will lift their heads and see purple, yellow, red, and white, a color, jamboree. And then there's one picture just of, of the girl in her apartment. Now, candles on a birthday cake, chocolate ice cream too. Prediction time. I think we know. <laughs> happy, happy birthday, mom, a garden box for you. Right? And then, of course, there's a cat in the story. Right? And then there's the ice cream that's there too. All right, so you can see that there's a, so much you can do with that one. I've given two, uh, uh, two pieces uh, and I'm at the five minute mark. And so what I'm gonna do is go through the last slides uh, because you all have access to this. All right, and let me share a screen one more time because I wanna give people a chance to share what might be a book that they're using here in just a moment. I'm gonna get to a concluding piece. All right, share and done, okay. Some of the other stories I have or strategies is simultaneous reply. We did a little bit of that. The, the way that it's kind of different is, is, is actually having students write something down. And, in, and this one is a, a, is a one, two, three show. So they write it down and they have it in, in front of them. And then it's one, two, three, and they don't say anything. They just show. All right, and this is an engagement piece because then you can say, oh, would you talk, tell us about yours? Oh, would you tell us about yours? And there's a bit, obviously there's this, there's this piece of, uh, uh, of uh, responsibility that's built into it as well. All right, one other one, a couple of things that I've used uh, uh, as well. You can see here is a foldable graphic organizer. All right, uh, this one is, is with a, a information text. Right, and, uh, and, and in essence, it looks like this. I hope people use these as well. So let me do stop share. This is the last one I think I can do, given the time and share here. If you have a piece of paper nearby, feel free to join in for this. This will take about one minute. You can see that the concept here is that kids take notes and we know that note taking is important right, when it comes to uh, gathering information, right? And so here's the paper. Actually, let me use, use a different one. Here's a paper we can, we can easily see, all right? And the idea here is we take one corner and it goes up this way, like that. To take the other corner, cross, it's almost like making a paper airplane. It goes across like this. We take this flap, and we fold it over and then we take these little pieces here and fold them over. So it's like a triangle, ends up being a triangle. And then each piece of the folded part represents something you want students to do, right? So I chose a, an information text for this one about skunks, right? And the students needed to put in one part the title, the date, my, uh, their name. And then as I was reading to them, they were writing down interesting facts that they heard, right? And their responsibility was to, was to uh, uh, gather this in, this in this unique graphic organizer. Of course, there are other ones that you can do when it comes to stories. You can do them this way, uh, title, author, reader, and then you can choose what you would like. Always include two things though. I always say, what's an emotional piece? What's the emotional connection we have to the story? And kids love to share an opinion. Did they like the story? Did it stink? Was it boring? Was it funny? You know, they want to do something. And of course, if you're looking for something in particular, characters, new words, and so on. We're at 2.28, so I have two minutes left. I will finish on time. For those, of, for those that know me, this is not my forte, but I will uh, finish on time. Uh, so a little bit more uh, here I want to share. Uh, this one in particular, how would you say the phrase? This is about our voice, right? And looking at uh, certain pieces of text and asking students, how would you say that? How would you say this? And this book, Crow Call, is an amazing story. Amazing story, right? And there's a certain text that I pulled out that you can, you can try. Another one called uh, around voice, uh, student voice getting involved. Uh, have you seen my new blue socks? It's a rhyming story. It's an excellent story, more for younger, younger kids, preschool in particular. 
right? Uh, and then the last, and one of the last ones I want to share, one of the, well, one of the last ones, but one of the most important ones is the name jar. If you're really thinking about starting off the school year and having new students in your, in your school, this will be a great one uh, to do. And I would really examine this. If you have any experience with close reading, this will be a, a super story to examine and find uh, what the author has certainly chosen. Uh, and I picked uh, two excerpts from the story as well. Right. Uh, in the last minute here, uh, how many people are familiar with Nuffle Bunny? Well, oh, wait a second. I'm not sharing my screen. Hold on. Sorry. Let me go back. Oops. My mistake. All right. So Crow Call, I was mentioning. I hear people taking snapshots. Uh, have you seen my new blue socks? The name jar, super, super story. Nuffle Bunny, thumbs up if you know Nuffle Bunny. Come on, I think just about everybody, all right. Uh, lots of things you can do with that. Now, ultimately, my message today is pick compelling stories. Pick ones that matter, pick ones that prompt discussion. This one in particular, Each Kindness is wonderful. You can see I've listed a few other ones here, Name Jar, Where the Wild Things Are, Paperback Princess is a favorite, right? And there's so much. All right, I'm pausing there. Uh, unmute and share your favorite story, go. Because I ran out of time. The dot. Ah, all right. Who else? I love the funny tale. Stephanie's funny tale. <laughs> Doesn't have to be one for me. <laughs> What's one, what one, ones that aren't here? A bug and a wish. Ah, yeah. Okay. So the other love ones? You, love you forever. Yeah, uh, yeah. The, mo okay. the most magnificent the thing. The graph and the The gibbon tree. The bad seed. Oh, now we're getting deep again. There oh, wasn't right. a lady who swallowed that. Ah, claro. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's a, that's a super Spanish. story. And it's called Ramon Recuerda. Yes. It's my favorite. I love the crayons one. We Most are at found. we we are at ten we are at two thirty one and I'm a minute over so <laughs> thank you thank you for great. coming thank here and 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 just listening to me ramble on about really good books so I hope some of the strategies are helpful and if you want to chat you I go back to this document contact me and and we can talk books so uh, good stuff everybody thank you enjoy the rest of your thank time. You. Here.